This is Michael Popak, Legal AF After Dark. It's time to talk about gag orders. What are they? Who imposes them? How many does Donald Trump currently have against him in the in uh, criminal and other proceedings all around the country, state and federal? And whether, not whether, we all, it's a rhetorical question, how has he violated them and what are judges going to do? He's had a uh, some sort of gag order or limiting order imposed starting last year with Judge Mershon in the Stormy Daniels hush money cover-up case in New York State Supreme Court, all the way down to Judge McAfee as a condition of the release of Donald Trump from, from being in custody and the requirements there. Even Judge Cannon's magistrate, Judge Goodman, imposed certain restrictions on Donald Trump. And as far as we can see on legal AF, the leading podcast at the intersection of law, justice, and politics. He's violated and blown through all of those barriers and all of those guardrails. But we dive into it. And Karen Friedman Ignifolo, my co-anchor, 30 years of experience as a prosecutor, has a very passionate position about the gag orders and her view that Donald Trump should already be in jail as a result. Not the Speaker of the House for some temporary period, in jail like any common criminal, that no one, no def criminal defendant would be able to get away with what he's getting away with. And she feels, and I agree with her, that the uh, the justice system is bending over so far backwards that now it's completely upside down in their treatment of Donald Trump as they try to thread the needle between First Amendment rights to campaign for office and the proper administration of justice. Take a listen. And I'll turn it over to you. Um, We've got judges, judges, judges who've been trying conditions of bond and release, um, have put restrictions on Trump's conduct and behavior. Actual orders, Judge Angoron, ordering Donald Trump not to attack staff of his, and in this case, his principal law clerk. Um, every, every court, except for Judge Cannon, has, has, has entertained some sort of protective order or gag order, starting with way back when with Judge Mershon in the Stormy Daniels hush money cover-up case and how he had a, you know, it's, it's hard sometimes being the first, navigate that minefield of First Amendment rights for a person who's campaigning for president, for president of the United States, of all things, and the not interfering with the proper administration of justice. And Judge Chutkin has a decision to make. She's got a fully briefed um, on a request by Jack Smith's special counsel to enter into a, um, a restriction on Donald Trump attacking all categories of stakeholders in our justice system and that she's going to rule on. I, and, and I want to hear your opinion about whether you think Jack Smith's going to do a supplemental based on some recent things that Donald Trump has done just in the trial that we're watching. Although I'm sure Judge Chutkin and her staff are watching these press conferences and all these other things. And kind of coming up with their own opinions. Okay, that's the frame. Go after it. You're very passionate about it. We want to hear from you. It's really interesting because this, the way Donald Trump acts and the way he attacks uh, judges, um, witnesses, prosecutors, uh, normal everyday civilians, right? Just anybody he wants, it's, it's, and, and, and foments violence through his followers. And January 6th, I think, being the most obvious uh, example of his rhetoric, his violent rhetoric, actually whipping up his followers into violence. And he does it constantly. And we discussed earlier before we before we started taping the podcast, we were discussing whether we had the resources at Midas Touch to create a digest, if you will, all in one place of all his threats, all of his uh, threats against judges, witnesses in chronological order, including the gag orders, where they fit in, because it's literally he's, he's told not to do something. He does it immediately after. It's like this it, automatic reaction. And yet there are almost no consequences. And and by having almost no consequences, it normalizes this behavior and makes it seem as if this is okay, as if this is free speech, as if violence and threats is something we have a right to do. Uh, we have a First Amendment right to do, and we don't, right? The First Amendment is not absolute. And when, when you're 
words turn into conduct and create violence and threats. It is no longer protected speech. And he absolutely utilizes the weapon of speech at every turn. And there are real consequences. There have been death threats. There have been uh, all sorts of, of violent uh, reactions from other people as a result of his actions. And, you know, we talk about it all the time. What are some of the examples of these threats, right? Some of them, the one I always like to, to show or talk about is the baseball bat, the picture that he posts of a base, him holding a baseball bat. And then this, the picture next to it is Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA's head. If that isn't a direct threat, I don't know what is. Or what he said about Mar um, General Milley, right? When he said, he said he deserves the firing squad, the death penalty, right? Or he says shoplifters should be shot. That's what should happen. Okay. I mean, look at, look at what he talks about. It's violence. Or what he said about, about, uh, about um, Attorney General Tish James, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago when he literally he literally said, um, "You ought to go after this Attorney General." How is that not an explicit call on on for others to attack physically attack uh, Attorney General Letitia James? Right? He called. Justice and Goron, a rogue judge, you know, who should be out of office and that the case against uh, Trump, obviously, he always says is a disgrace, a witch hunt, etc. And then yesterday he started posting about Ngoron's staff member, this poor woman who's a civil servant, like a public servant who works for the judge. And starts, it's, it's, it just reminds me of Shay Moss and, and Ruby Freeman, somebody just doing their job. And he posts uh, pictures of them with lies, you know, and he, he posted a picture of her online. It's essentially doxing her and who she, what she looks like and, 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 and basically unleashing his, his followers on her. And the judge had to issue what they're calling a gag order. It's not a gag order, you know, saying, oh, you're no longer allowed to threaten anybody. And his, 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 uh, Trump's lawyers said, oh, there's no need for a gag order because threats are already punishable by law. I actually agree with his attorney. Donald Trump should be prosecuted and punished for his threats. He should be arrested, prosecuted, and put in jail. I don't understand why we treat him with such kid gloves. I don't think it matters that he's running for president anymore. It does not give you a license to create violence, to encourage violence, and to put real lives in danger. Someone is going to get hurt and there is no doubt about it. Somebody is going to get hurt. There are already is 24 seven protection for the prosecutors here uh, and for, you know, for the judges, et cetera. But Jan and, Goron and comes with a security detail that, that, okay. that, bring, that bring him into the courtroom. But, but let me ask you, I, I like it. And I don't want anybody to think I don't like this. However, let's think of the imagery of the guy that's going to run for president sitting in a jail for a period of time because he violated some order and um <clears throat> looks not he's not violating an order he's violating the law you're not allowed to say you know you should go after the attorney general because she's a racist like you're not mm -hmm. oh, that's not free speech you're not allowed to hold a baseball bat to you know some a, a prosecutor's head yeah, but it, if it a doesn't guy... come with the ter it doesn't come with the territory as somebody yeah. as, as somebody who has had death threats right yeah. i had to have police cars outside my kids school i had a molotov cocktail it was all cuz of my husband not me but i had a, who who used to be a, well he used to be a prosecutor no i'm just saying i i did have death threats to myself. I did. And it's not fun. It's unsettling to have to be escorted in and out of a building a or to guy... be escorted in and out home. And it doesn't come with the territory. You don't sign up for that. that when you're serving. But if a guy okay. or a, if a person stood in front of the fountain of Washington Square Park on a soapbox with a, with a, with a speaker or microphone and yelled out and just repeated verbatim the things that Donald Trump has said, you should go after the New York Attorney General and run her out of town. And the and Goron is a political animal. And and um you and you and here's a picture that I've made of 
of me holding a baseball bat next to a picture of Alvin Bragg. Is, are the New York police going to arrest that guy and put him in jail? Depends on who he is. Or is that, or is that First Amendment political speech? Depends on who he is. If he's someone who, uh, in the past, when he said that, all of his followers, all of the people, his audience turned around and um, and created extreme violence, right? If that, like on January 6th, if, if that person had a history of being able to what you would call incite a riot and incite violence, and he knew that that's what his words would do, and you can show that with a history of, of this, and that, and then you are, he is told over and over again and warned over and over again not to do it, but he does it anyway, you damn right would he be prosecuted for that. It's, it's, it's both objective and subjective, you know, analysis, like it's both reasonable. Um, it, it's not, it's the, er, you know, everything is co context matters, right? You could run into a theater, a movie theater where no one is there, but you and scream fire. Is that a crime? No. You go in and you and it's crowded and there's a hundred people in that theater and you run in and you scream fire and everybody runs out and people get trampled and, and somebody gets killed. Is that a crime? Yes. So why it's haven't not, the, why haven't the judges done it? Because everybody is afraid of him. They are. They're afraid of, I don't know why he's being treated differently than every other defendant. If there was another defendant on trial in any other case, any other case who threatened a judge, who threatened a prosecutor, who put a picture of the judge's court staff online, that person would be put in jail, mm -hmm. period. I agree with that. Stop. That I happens that. in every case, in every courtroom, for every defendant in, this con in, in New York. I shouldn't say in this country, probably mostly in this country, but in New York. That is how people are treated. That is if what he happens when you do this, but not him. If he wasn't running for office, I, I think they'd pull the trigger. Right. <clears throat> I, I do. But, he, but guess what? He ran for office as a, to, this is his Teflon. This is his defense. Oh, no, no. I know that's why he's running for office. <clears throat> but if he was just former, if he was just real estate, whatever, uh, what do they call him? I saw it today in the New York Post, um, real estate mogul, um, Donald Trump, um, citizen Trump. You're right. I don't think he'd, he'd be able to get away with it. And what we're watching is the judiciary struggle to contain him, to treat him like anybody else, recognizing that he's not anybody else because he's going to be the Republican nominee for president. And while that shouldn't give him a free pass, you can see, you saw the struggle start with Judge Mershon. Mm -hmm. How do I thread the needle between his First Amendment rights to campaign and to talk about the case outside the courtroom in a certain way, and then not intimidate witnesses, my staff, you know, not the judge. Judges never say them because they don't want to. They don't want to act like they've got a thin skin. And now it's really going to come to a head with Judge Chutkin. Um, he hasn't tested it with Judge McAfee. Judge McAfee not only made the the jury anonymous in Georgia. We're going to talk about Georgia next, but in a one page order, like okay, that's a good idea. We're going to make an anonymous jury. But suffused within that is a recognition, obviously by the judge, that there's somebody that needs protection from whom? From Donald Trump and the others. And so he just did it on his own, sort of like Judge Kaplan making the E. Jean Carroll rape case an anonymous jury. Right. So you have the judges doing that. He hasn't. Trump hasn't tested McAfee yet, because McAfee has said, "Don't interfere." Don't attack witnesses. Don't attack. He didn't say prosecutors, but but don't try to intimidate by social media or otherwise. This judge in Denver, who's handling the Fourteenth Amendment disqualification case, also issued an order, but he hasn't gone after her. He he acts out in these, and Cannon isn't going to issue one. The the um, magistrate judge, Judge Goodman, when he released Donald Trump um, in Mar-a-Lago, made it a condition that he not attack or go after witnesses. And so we haven't really heard violations of that because, you know, Jack Smith would be the first one to complain if that were happening. So you have these limited orders. But the one that is the most on the nose to what you're trying to address, Karen, is being considered by Judge Chutkin. I guess the question for you is, is Judge Chutkin, does she have the cojones, given her background and her demeanor, to finally shut Donald Trump down with a gag order of the Department of Justice's request 
And secondly, um, do you think Jack Smith sends in as a supplemental all of the um, bad things and bad conduct that Donald Trump has exhibited over the first three days of his trial in New York to Judge Chutkin to consider? It's a great, I think it's a great question. Uh, I think Judge Chutkin will do something limited. I don't know if she'll even go as far as what Jack Smith has asked for. I think she'll say things like, you can't threaten witnesses, et cetera. I think she'll, she'll, she'll be very narrowly tailored. Um, but she'll do something for sure. I mean, and, and yeah, I think, I think, I think if I were Jack Smith, I would want to expand my record with, with the rest of these threats. Cause again, context matters, intention matters. Yes, it's a separate proceeding, but look at what he does. And again, if I were Jack Smith, you know, and, and Gorin doesn't have to worry about a jury pool being poisoned. It's just him. He's worried about the safety of his staff, but but Judge Chutkin and Jack Smith have to also protect a future jury pool, not only from threats and violence, which is one issue. They also have to protect the integrity of the trial. And so that's kind of the, the two separate issues at play here. And, and the protecting the integrity of the trial is one type of request, if you will, that, that Jack Smith is making about the jurors, about, you know, et cetera. But, but really what I'm talking about is, is protecting people's lives and, and protecting people from violence and from hate filled uh, death threats, because that's, that's the thing that's happening. It happened to Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. It's, there's been lots of reporting about the judges and the prosecutors and even some of the witnesses receiving a lot of this type of um, this type of threatening uh, whether calls, emails, et cetera. And if something, God forbid, happens and someone gets hurt, I think you're going to see people react and judges react much differently. And um Although I say that, but then on January 6th, when, you know, the Capitol was being stormed and, and there was extreme violence and people were getting hurt and police officers were, were, were getting hurt and ultimately lost their lives, he sat there and did nothing, right? He did nothing for several hours. And, and if I were a judge, that would be enough for me. Um, that he is reckless enough that he knows what his words do and he's shown that he means it. He knows what it, he knows what they do and he means it. And he's also making a mockery of the judge's requests and orders by the very next day, you know, with, with judge and Goran specifically told the parties the day before that he cannot threaten his staff. And he did it anyway. He post, he, he, he put that post up. And so if I were a judge, I'd be like, you can't do that. You can't like, you can't just give the proverbial middle finger to the court. Um, you know, you have to have some respect for the rule of law and for, for the court process and for the authority of a judge. And, and I hope, you know, the judges are all, they all seem to be inching a little bit closer and it's like, well, okay, one does this. Okay. Then the next one will meet them there. And then someone else takes a little baby step forward and, and, you know, but the, but but we're getting dangerously close. His 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 rhetoric is escalating. You know, the, like this week he says you should go after the attorney general. I mean, that's not even you know stand back and stand by. That was a little bit like, eh, is that a threat? Is that not really a threat? Stand by. This is affirmative. You should go after the attorney general. How is that not a direct threat? How is that not actionable? And I, I think that at some point, if something happens, you'll see everybody's going to play catch up and, and they'll say, okay, that's it. We're done. But it's a shame we have to wait for something else to happen. And what happens is not enough. And, um, yep. and that's, I think that's, that, that's where we are with, with the threats. And, and that's separate from the, let's not infect the jury pool with, with all this information. I think that's a little more, um, a little more inchoate and a little harder to, you know, to gag, if you will, in a free speech campaign uh, 
cycle and, and world because there he can say, I'm running for president and I have a right to defend myself, right? I, people ask me, I have a right to defend myself. So, and, and one of my opponents, Mike Pence is a witness. Yeah, but, but he's also my political opponent. And so I have a right to, to speak there. I think that part of it is, is important, but trickier, but these threats I think are just appalling and he's making a mockery out of our, yeah. our judicial system. Yeah, I agree with you. And um, I'd love to see a judge both write a strict order that he then violates and finds himself in contempt, allowing them to, through progressive discipline, do something about it. Um, but we haven't seen it yet. And hopefully, maybe Goron's gag order, which he called a gag order, will be the license, the permission slip for other judges to do it the way that Judge Alvin Bragg getting the first indictment kind of, for me, broke the ceiling and allowed, you know, people like Fonnie Willis and then ultimately Jack Smith to feel better about their, uh, that, you know, well, he's already been indicted. They know that we ripped that's that bandaid off. Let's, let's move on. Well, if you like that clip from our most recent midweek edition of Legal AF on the Midas Touch Network, you're going to love the entire show. Every Wednesday, every Saturday, it's a combination of Karen Friedman, Ignifolo, me, and Ben Mysalis doing just that, batting the ball around, explaining what we think are complicated concepts with our experience as practicing lawyers. The leaders of Legal AF have over 75 years of experience in courtrooms, just like the ones we talk about. And we bring it to you, sitting at that intersection of law, politics, and justice so that you don't have to. And if you like it, Tune into our next episode, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Pick up the full library of all of our almost 400 episodes that's on the Midas Touch Network and under playlists. And then you can get audio versions of our podcast wherever you get your audio podcast from. Until my next hot take, until the next episode of Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.